In this video, I want to cover and explain explicit and implicit measures in Power BI. I want to explain what these two are and what are their main differences. And also I want to explain why and when to use one or the other. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fennan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So implicit and explicit measures are one of those things that you probably use, but you don't know that you're already using them. So I already explained the concept in a different video, but I feel like I've only touched the surface and I didn't cover it in a great deal. So in this video, I want to explain it in great detail and explain to you why it matters. So let's jump into this example report that I've created. It has just one table, the orders table, and it's a pretty simple table. It just has the orders with some information about those orders. So what were the products bought, uh, the unit price and quantity of these products, and also the sales, which is simply the unit price multiplied by quantity. Now let's start by dragging the product name in a table in our report. And let's drag in the sales here. And you'll notice something interesting. So as we added the sales into the table, what it's done is it's aggregated the sales by product because that's what we've given it as a row context. So what you'll notice is that you only have one instance of the products in this table. And what Power BI has done is it's grouped the sales together and summed them up. So you will have Alice Mutton, for example, uh, even though there are multiple orders for this product, it's grouped these sales and summed them up together. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it very well, so let's have a look at it on the data view here. And if I just select the product Alice Mutton, you'll see that although in this table view, we have multiple products in the table. In our report view, it's all grouped up and what it's done is it's summed up the sales column into one. So the total sales for this product uh, in this row context is £35,000. So basically Power BI automatically assumed that you want this column to be added up all together. So it pretty much aggregated it for you without having to think about it. And you'll know that uh, they've done that by just looking at the values uh, drop down here. If you look at the sales and if we, uh, you can already see it's doing a sum of the sales um, for each of the products. And uh, you can see that you have a couple of different options to aggregate your value, your sales. So if you wanted to see them uh, on an order level and not aggregated like this, you can hit don't summarize. Um, but at the moment, you know, you can use some, but you can even see the uh, average price for each of these products. Uh, you can do things like uh, count the number of orders or minimum and maximum, things like this. So this is what we call an implicit measure where the aggregations are done for you. And if you're a beginner in Power BI and using it for the first time, uh, using implicit measures allows you to get started and get value out of your reports really quickly. However, when you use Power BI more and more, you'll notice a few disadvantages when using these implicit measures. One is the reusability of the measure. So by creating measures like this, when you have other developers looking for your calculations in your reports, they likely won't find it, uh, which means that they will have to recreate it every single time they want to do the same thing, which um, doesn't really help them reuse the same measures that you've already prepared for them. The second thing is that it's not very flexible. So it means that uh, you're limited to the pre-made calculations that you see in this dropdown and there's not a lot of way to customize it or even string it with other more complex calculations. So creating something that we call explicit measures solve these two problems and let me show you the difference. If I create a new measure here and let's name this one sum of sales and I'm going to type sales and you're going to see that IntelliSense gives us some suggestions. We're going to just take it. So it's asking, what do you want to sum? And this is the aggregation that Power BI is doing for us in the sales table. Uh, so we're going to go to the sales column here and say, I want a sum of the sales column. 
and if I just drag it here, you'll notice that you get the exact same results as the implicit measure. However, the main difference is when you go to the right hand side here on the values, if you try to change the aggregation, you can't. And that's because we have explicitly said that this measure only does the sum of sales. So you can't uh, change it to, let's say, average or count. And this means that if you want a measure that averages the sales or counts the number of sales, they need to create a new measure that does the exact aggregations that you want. So it solves the first problem of reusability. It means that when other developers look at your data sets and they see the measure called sum of sales, it's quite predictable to know what it does because it can only be used as a sum because it just adds up the values um, and it's explicitly saying that it's doing the sum of sales and it can't be misinterpreted and it can be just dragged and used as it is. Another thing is the fact that this measure explicitly says that it sums the sales from the columns table. It means that it can be stringed up to create more complex calculations uh, using other functions things like the calculate function, for example. So let's say, for example, we want to sum the sales uh, the same way that we do, except that we want to calculate it using the quantity in unit price. So don't forget, the sales column is just the quantity multiplied by unit price. Now, if we replace this sum, and let's say we want to create a sum x, and if you don't know what this does, check out my other video covering it. Um, but what it does is it aggregates the columns or the tables that you give it um, and then evaluates any expression that you add to it. So we're going to give it the orders table. And here I want to say, um, I want you to multiply the quantity against the unit price and then add up these values all together. And you'll see that it gives you the same values as before. However, the difference is now we've stringed them up in a different, more explicit measure. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility to add some more context or string this up into other functions. So to sum it all up, if you're a beginner in Power BI and you want to get quick values from your Power BI reports, you should start using implicit values as it gives you some understanding of how the concepts of these measures work. However, as you progress in your Power BI career, you'll want to rely more on the explicit measures because it gives you that reusability factor when working with large groups of developers and it gives some more predictability on how these measures are used. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand the main difference between implicit and explicit measures in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.